I would imagine that the uh, the Porsche dealership, um, you know, with uh, with their their high standards for their product, they I, I would imagine the like your your the quality of the experience that you, they provided you was really world class. Like when they when you showed up, and how did they take care of you? So here's where I'm a little bit torn on the way that Germans do things and the way that Americans do things. All right. So they hold us to a very high standard of, of customer satisfaction. So we're, we're used to, let's say, the, the Ritz-Carlton, uh, St. Regis, the five Montage. Star. Five star. Where it's very, very customer oriented. Um, the, the German experience was cool. Don't get me wrong. There was nothing wrong with it. But it's it's much more cold. It's not nearly as warm at all. It's not. There's no smiling really. Yeah. They their their culture is is basically if you smile, it's almost a sign of weakness mm-hmm. in a way. So it's it's a lot more like we're down to business. We're glad you're here. Let's get what we need to do done, and then get you on your way. Yeah. So that was a little. It was. It, the thing is, there was nothing wrong with that. It was just kind of strange, dealing with the uh, the the culture differences. And I, the one example I have is, uh, is I went to a McDonald's. Very easy. I just wanted a soft drink because I'm like, I don't know what else is around here. Let's just get this McDonald's. And there's no employees. There's nothing. And some guy walks out and he stands in front of the counter in front of it, though, not behind it. And there's a bunch of little conveyor belts behind. And you go and pick your stuff on the touch screen. And then you go stand over in this little, like, yellow square. It's almost like a penalty box. It tells you to stand over there. Like, okay. <laughs> wait for my drink and then on the conveyor belt the drink comes around the guy brings it to you and then he just hands it to you and walks away so i'm like all right well i drink my drink i'm just people watching the square and everything and i go look for garbage and there's nothing because it's all clean it's super clean which is really cool it's a mcdonald's right Right. normally like not like it's not clean but you're like ah this place isn't the best you're kind um, of usually trying to overlook things. Exactly. Well, this place, you're like, it's super clean. So I, I'm walking around looking for garbage. And the guy looks at me and he rolls his eyes. He's like, oh, like you can tell I'm American or something. <laughs> tourist. Yeah, tourist. <laughs> and he goes, he does this thing. And, uh, and so he t- t- takes me over to this little, like, bread warmer. And so I open it up, and that's the, there's a bunch of trays. You just put your drink on there or your garbage, put it on the tray, and you close the door. And then I just left. And it was one of those weird things like... That was like a, a metaphor for my entire trip. Everything was not hard to navigate, but way different than what you're normally used to. So yeah. it was just, oh, it'd be fine after two months. But for one day there or two days there, it's almost impossible. The wow. train station, you have to have Euro coins to go pee, yeah. right? What? Yeah, you have to walk in at the train station. They're like, oh, you want to use the bathroom? It's one Euro coin. You're like, I haven't transferred any of my money. To, I don't know what a Euro coin is. <laughs> I guess I got to go get Euro coins somewhere at some vending machine, and then I can go pee. It was just a weird experience. Wow. Super cool, just different. Is that what your experience is over there? Uh, you know, I grew up there as a little boy, and so it was much more lenient but very serious. Um, on they had these uh, house frows, or the they would be out sweeping the sidewalks. Like the, it was extremely clean and very efficient, and it was, uh, yeah, it's a different world. But you're right. I think if you were just to go over there for one day, you'd be like, what the heck? But I I lived over there for a long time, and I didn't know any different. But it is a serious crowd. They are not like when it's business time strap up because you're it's for real we're talking about getting stuff done and i i kind of am that you know what i mean like when it's business have you been around me when it's business time like let's get to work it's all making totally. a lot of yeah. sense yep. yeah. yeah it does make sense doesn't it? Yep. And, I, I, and i like that i mean that's how i like to be as well it's business but also i smile a lot. i like to make it like a yeah. good time and they do care about their employees a lot a lot like a lot they want to make sure their employees have uh one month off a year like they shut the factory down from like june 14th to i don't know july 7th or whatever for everyone it's just completely shut down everyone goes on vacation on those specific times and strangely you're you're uh, from there nobody goes on vacations in their own country yeah i'm like the, the guy that uh was my track driver he had never even been to stuttgart lives what? in leipzig it's like four hours away yeah like, never even been there i'm like how have you not been there? Like, well, when we go on vacation, we, we want to go to France. We want to fly down to Vienna. We want to go... South Africa. They travel. Yes, they yeah, travel. A lot. Not in their own country, which I thought was strange because if you've grown up in Utah, everyone's been to St. George, right. Lake Powell, the whole state. You've just gone there because you just drive around and you just see things. So it was kind of a different culture thing there, too. Hmm. But you drive across the country. Like, if driving yeah. from here to St. George, you've driven... You're in... 
you've gone to France. Like it is exactly. It's a significant distance because these countries are tiny comparatively speaking. Utah is a monster. State to state st- visits are like European, like going from one country to the next in Europe, or even or, a, or multiple a, a, countries. Yeah, pass, driving right. through countries. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. We would, we did uh, some train rides as a little boy, and we like, we just. Now we're out of Switzerland. I thought we just got here. You know, we just got to Switzerland and we were passing right yeah. on through. And it's tiny. It's amazing. Huh. Yeah. And so it's hard to get your head around when you're from these giant states. My mom, um, she's actually straight from Germany. I'm, I'm an American German. Dad's from Manti. And um, she would, all the time, we'd be driving and she's like, We're still in Texas? <laughs> Oh, everybody's you'll, yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. Texas. Yeah, you never fair. won't say that yeah. when you're driving in yeah. Texas. But I, I, am, I imagine those tiny little countries that she's from, it, like even still, she's like, oh my God, it's, <laughs> it's, still, it's going? still happening. We've been doing this for days, <laughs> you know? Well, then you go across country lines and they have different laws, different rules. Yeah. Like I went down into Chechia uh, on my way to Prague, and when you cross the border, apparently you're supposed to have a highway license. So you have to pay... It was like 16 year olds, nothing big, but you just, you don't know about it. Uh, and then Waze let me know. They say, do you want to continue using this highway? It'll be $16. Do you want to go to the website and pay? Like, okay, I guess so. Yeah. And I just, I paid my little, little dues and then kept on going to Prague. Yeah. Now and, you're qualified to drive because you paid the tax. Yeah. Oh my God. On huh. there, but it wasn't in Germany. There was nothing in Germany I had to pay. Yeah. But going over the border, I had to pay. It was just kind of a... Just a different thing, and nobody's there to tell you. If you had a tour guide, someone that was used to it, it'd be a little easier. But if you're just on your own, you only know English, which I don't expect them to uh, cater to me at all. But I'm still like, um, what do I do? <laughs> where is, do you know where this place is? Show them a picture. This place, and everyone says, oh, everyone knows English. Yeah. But what I was told was so many Germans know English, but they're not, it's not perfect English. They're not really good at it. So they'd rather not talk to you or not speak uh, and make a mistake than, than just try to at least fumble through it and navigate like what I would do with right. like a Spanish guy. I don't know Spanish very well, but I know a lot of words. I'd at least try to communicate with him. There's like, no. I do, I feel like that is a common sentiment along, uh, among a lot of people, when, especially when you're learning a language. That's one of the biggest barriers to learning languages is that as an, if you are trying to learn a language as an adult, you don't want to feel stupid. Mm-hmm. And so as it's a, a pride kid, thing. Yeah, exactly. As a kid, when you're learning a language, you don't give a shit if you screw up the language. You're going to screw it up a million times, but then you'll get it right. Yeah. But they don't think about it. But as an adult, you're like, man, I sound like a six-year-old. And, it, and then that hinders your ability. To, to grow because you can't if you're not using it you won't learn it mm-hmm. now, the, the thing I noticed about Germany too is when you're there if you're even attempting to speak German even if I'm trying and I'm just doing shit at it I'm terrible <laughs> they will forgive me and they will then speak English to me they, right. but I have to at least attempt I don't walk up and expect you to speak English you know what I mean uh, but right. I'm going to come at you and be like so if you give a solid college try, they will respect and that then, you're giving it an yeah, effort. Yeah, and they'll you, go to their broken English right. easily. And it happened quite a bit, but they didn't want to start with English. It's kind of like a mutual thing. Yeah. Like you show me that you're willing to, to... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was interesting. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Last time I was in Germany, though, I was 11. So, I mean, I'm that kid that was just making stuff up. <laughs> so you didn't have the little magic drawer in there to throw your trash away, is what you're saying? I, 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 I don't remember that. Yeah. But they had McDonald's. Yes, they had a they had a few American restaurants, and which I didn't want to go to. I didn't want to. I they don't eat McDonald's here, right? But I was there. I'm like, hey, you know, I'd like a soda just because I'm walking around this. It's only like eight in the morning. There's a farmers market being set up. I'm grabbing apples. I'm like, no money at all. It was awesome. Like, hey, here's fifty cents equivalent. And they, Can I have an apple and walk around with that? And I'm like, oh, there's McDonald's. Something I kind of know. Let's walk in and just grab a drink. Sure. Yeah. So that's really the only reason I went there. So when we walked around to multiple bars and restaurants uh, throughout my trip, and it was it was really cool. Um, a couple of the restaurants, they didn't really speak English at all or didn't want to, and the food wasn't like the you look at the menu. I had my Google Translate going on for the whole menu, and I'm like, nothing here looks like I want to eat any of it. Um, so we went to this one bar that had just like hamburgers. And it was an Irish bar. Of course, it's an Irish bar. <laughs> Irish bar serving hamburgers. <laughs> and we go in, and, and the and the uh, the concierge guy, whatever you want to call him, the guy that greets everyone, he says something to me, a long sentence in German. I'm like, oh, let me just start out, bro. Uh, I've been to like six different places, and no one knows English. I'm sorry. Can we just have a table? I don't know if you understand me. And he and he, he like kind of like rolled his eyes a little bit, and he goes, oh, 
I wish everyone was as, as honest as you when they first walked in. Right this way, brother. I'm like, fuck yes. I love this place. I was so happy. So then he came over and him, he had the girls that were in the bar come over and talk to us and show us all of the, the Chechen beers, all of the German beers. They're like, hey, the Chechen beers are like the best. Even though we're German, uh, these, these beers, are the ones. These are the ones. Yeah. Have these. So and they had one that was called Budweiser. A, a Chechen beer called Budweiser. And I go, what? that's got me all over it. <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> so that, and that place, it was kind of strange too because as, as we left, um, I gave him a tip. My, my bill was only, I want to say it was like 60 bucks or whatever. And I gave him a $50 tip because they were awesome. Mm-hmm. And that's even a, a pretty big tip in America. Yeah. But they, the, he walked back over and said, hey, sir, you made a, you made a mistake. Because they're expecting like, three four dollars for this it was it was wild everywhere i went we over tipped like crazy but because of the service was so good i'm like no you guys were amazing please have that i want you to have this that bar that bar tab that we just had in america would have been like 200 bucks it was nothing here for some reason <laughs> so you and your staff deserve it please take it and that happened in like four different restaurants we went to prague the girl was like we're like check uh uh prague money check money what what What's good as far as a tip? And you had to do math in your head. They're like, well, it's 600 of these. And I'm like, all right, what's that? I'm like, $3? No. <laughs> Me and my buddy had this great dinner, and we had two giant steins of, of dark prog beer. It mm. was awesome. It was like 21 American dollars. It was so wow. great. I gave her 20 bucks. Like, it was like, okay, here's 20 bucks for that. And she came back. She's like, no, I can't accept this. It's too much money. And we're like, no, please take it. Yeah, like, we know for, what we're doing. We're like forty-one dollars for me and him to have a full dinner and and drink beer while we're here. No, please take it. And she's like, "This will be the best tip that I've gotten all month." All oh, month. And so, and wow. so we're like, "We'll be back tomorrow." Yeah, <laughs> see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Yeah, we'll the table ready. For and us. I want the exact same food. Everything it was a weird, and everything. It's crazy too because all the buildings are really old, right? Yeah. They're like, from the twelve hundreds. We walked downstairs. And we're like. You know what? People were tortured here like, yeah. in like the 1200s. I guarantee it. This is like the dungeon. Yeah. I see bodies. Or yeah. As I go, I see. Yeah, I see dead people. Dead people. Dead people. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. That is crazy. But, I remember thinking, this is our new build. Our oldest buildings are like newer than their, their you know what I mean? Like we got nothing. Yeah, yeah. nothing. No history here. And we, I actually took a tour. I did the tourist things. I'm like, I want to know about this city. And this was in, this was in Prague. I actually went to Czechia for way longer than Germany because they spoke English. Everyone did, so it made me feel comfortable. Mm. And I wanted to do everything there. I did all the tours, the boat rides. I went along the river. It was amazing he- seeing all the history. And the one thing that stood out was he, uh, my buddy owns a construction company. So he's with me and he's like, look at all the architecture. How much, you couldn't even bid any of this stuff out. It's just so ornate and wonderful. I, I just, I love it. Craftsmanship. Let's add, yeah, the craftsmanship. But when you think about it, uh, we asked how long it took to build this particular church or their, um, where the president lives. I don't know what, what he called it, but someplace, the parliament kind of a place. And they said, well, we started this building in the year 1402 and with the plan to have it finished in 1675, but it took toward the mid, mid-1700s. mid And we're like, it took over 300 years to build this building? Oh, my dear Lord. We're like, so, and the lifespan back then, they said, was 41 years. Yeah. So that we're you talking, know, three, we're talking. Six generations or more. Or more. Like, <laughs> of working years, we're talking probably 10 generations of actual people you start that first brick, and your 10th grandchild finishes that building. Wow. You think about that. That's older than our whole country. It's crazy, crazy. to think about. Wow. I read a book that talked about they had the master, uh, the master mason, and he was putting together the idea, and he knew full well he would be dead long before this building would ever be finished, and it was England. And um, it, the book talks about how he, the lengths that he went to in order to communicate clearly his vision all the time because he knew he wouldn't be around for it to end and so like it just it was a really interesting book because it wasn't just like i think i'm going to build a church it was just like he he had drew all of the how the the rain gutters were going to come down and how you know just just some crazy cool stuff in detail that would we would never think about here in america because it's just like ah we're going to start a house and have it done in 
20 minutes. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And these, it was, it was really a great book because it, it really made you appreciate that, that kind of perspective, like that long 300 years to build this cathedral, you know? He's like George R. R. Martin, like the Song of Fire and Ice will never be finished. Yes. Game of Thrones, just the TV show's done. He's like, I'll finish the sixth and seventh books in whenever. Yeah. Somebody else can finish <laughs> that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Amazing. So